this and I know I'm like, I'm always like, oh. hey, but I'm here and I'm, and I'm ready to talk to everyone about everything. You know, we're going to have, we're going to have a good time. Are y'all ready? suspicious if your neighbors uh, didn't see any kids at your house and you had kids, six kids, and they only seen four that they had ever seen, and these kids apparently went outside. Because if y'all remember correctly, the day the boys went missing, they were outside playing with chalk. And for those of you who don't know, it was not sidewalk chalk. They said they found no evidence of the kids playing with chalk. Well, the reason why they found no evidence of the kids playing with chalk is because they were not playing with chalk. Chalk. Their dog's name is Chalka. So, that's the chalk they were playing with, folks. Um, let's see. What do we know about the bio mom? I told you guys earlier, I found out something about the bio mom, the bio family. Um, why they're back in the picture, what they're doing, um, the whole nine yards with that is what's going on. They have a GoFundMe page up. With their GoFundMe page, they've raised over um, $20,000. Which. You could always pull your phone up and sit in front of you like that. The $20,000 they've raised is. Um, it's Apparently not just going home. idle. It's not just sitting there. They put up two billboards. They've already got one digital billboard up for the boys that is facing one direction. They have another one up facing another direction, and they they're they're by um, major um, major internet internet connections. I actually have the exact place where they are located written down, but um, first there's a couple things I wanted to tell you all about, um, is that um, the boys are ages 3 and 4, first off, um, 3 and 4, playing with the dog outside, picture, you know, picture your yard, and picture your dad, you're collecting firewood over in the other side, and you hear silence. You don't hear the dog or the kids because obviously the dog would follow the kids, right? He would. So what do you do? You go check on the kids. You don't run in the house, right? He he, 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 gran he glanced over there and then ran in the house to talk to Jacqueline about the kids not being there. That just doesn't make any sense to me. I'd be pissed if my husband did that. If, if 
he thought Jesse and KK should be outside and he looked over there and then came in where I'm at in presence and told me about it and then as Trezell said hit many corners and seven minutes longer seven minutes y'all I cannot express enough when he when I found out that man looked for those babies for seven whole minutes I lost my shit they, they already showed no emotion when they were being um when they were being interviewed. I'm not saying they weren't in shock when you're, you know, when something happens to your kids, of course you could be in shock, but to show no emotion at all, I, that's kind of, that's very, very, very suspect. I'm sorry. Super suspect. I, mean, I, I hit, I hit so many corners. Well, Trezell, you didn't hit enough corners. You were out there for seven minutes. When Coco went missing, Coco, hey girl, you mind, Coco? When my dog was missing, we looked for her every day. We walked the neighborhood, and it wasn't for seven minutes. I looked for my dog for hours upon hours upon hours every day for two weeks until I found her. I searched ads on Facebook, YouTube, Craigslist, anywhere I could find. I was watching, we did every social media that there is, we were on there. And thank God, my husband finally found something and we found her. But <clears throat> Coco was missing at one point and we had to look for her. And I cannot imagine if one of our children, actually KK, when she was three, she tried to walk to the store. She wanted to go get her a Reese cup. She and I had been outside playing My Little Ponies. And she was gone for a total of, oh, I'd say two minutes before I, the police were called. And literally what happened with that was she was left sitting outside the front door. We lived in a condo. She was outside the front door. And my husband was in the living room. The door was left open. And I walked in the kitchen because, you know, he wanted me to cook something to eat or whatever. I went back to look because I know that dads don't always watch the best. The same as I'm saying Trezell may not have been watching the closest, but... Your ears, you know, you have ears. The same thing I said to my husband whenever my daughter was gone for that day. Did you not hear her not out there? But, you know, Trezell wasn't watching TV, DJ. It's a long story. I'm not even telling my story. I'm telling their story. Um, <clears throat> KK was gone for probably less than two minutes before we called 911. And I did not care. It, it was what it was. It had to be done. You know, of course I was knocking on neighbors' doors. But before I go knocking on neighbors' doors, I'm going to call 911 to get the police there so that we can go ahead and start looking for my baby in case someone did grab her. Because the fact that her dad didn't see her leave or the fact that she didn't come in the house and, you know, when KK was three, she, she was very clinging to me and dad. We didn't think that she would try to go get her own Reese cup, but the stairs where our condo was at was literally, you know, less than three seconds away from where she was at. The house giving me that. Even for a three year old with little short legs. And that's another thing. I didn't even I didn't even think about that, you guys. Think about how short the legs are on a three year old and a four year old. How far can they really get unless they're in a vehicle or unless someone has taken them somewhere and that someone was definitely someone they knew or someone they felt comfortable with because if it were not someone they knew and felt comfortable with you need to be seeing your comments and so you can respond to that kind oh of thank you do i didn't even see your comment so um pull your phone yeah, the news hasn't been talking about this, and that that is why I'm covering this story. Um, I feel like it's very important that that it gets out there because these kids could be anywhere. Like how Gannon Stout came up missing from Colorado, but they found him in Escambia, Florida. You know, these boys came up missing from Cal City, but 
no one ever saw them in Cal City. So they may be coming kind of missing from Bakersfield. Maybe they came up missing a month earlier. We don't know. Well, we actually, we do know that they were seen in Bakersfield um, shortly earlier. But, yeah, thank you for noticing that I was covering stuff that the news isn't covering because their local news has covered it. Um, not very recently, but yeah, their local news did cover it a while back. But no, our our news should be telling us this. The headline news, when we go on headline news, rather than seeing Joe Biden's face every time we turn on the news, we should be seeing these boys' faces. We should see these boys. I mean, Orin and Orson matter. These kids are out there somewhere. Someone knows something. And until people see these kids, they're not going to know who they're looking for or what they're looking for. And I'm telling you what, you guys, every one of you needs to take a really good look at these two faces because these kids could be anywhere. Unfortunately, I, I believe they're, I don't believe they're alive. Their mom, their mom says, no, oh, their mom's name, by the way, is Ryan Dean, you guys, and she, um, she had the children and gave them up for adoption shortly after birth. I don't know if it was a financial issue or what they didn't really say. I couldn't find out much about that. All I know is that she did try to get her children back. Their original names, you know, she gave them um, birth names, classic and, I'm sorry, their names were classic and saint and um, they were renamed when they were adopted by the West family. The West family fostered them for a while. They had two foster, or had, actually they had two foster children and two children of their own, as well as the two adopted boys. Um, right now, the fosters and the other two biologicals are in CPS care, which I think they should be. I think the Wests are, um, I'm here for males, either, I don't know, uh, maybe maybe Jacqueline will crack, maybe she won't, I don't know, what do you guys think? Have you guys, have y'all seen that sketchy interview, you want to be quiet? Let me show you guys, for those of you who haven't seen this, I want to show you all this sketchy interview. This is the one time that they chose to speak to the media, and now they're no longer speaking to media. So keep that in mind as well. Um, oh yeah, forgot to tell you the chat that. Um, folks, they are not speaking with media. They think that um, there's they need they need to go look elsewhere, and um, they're just not gonna talk to the media anymore. I know whenever my son was killed, I wanted awareness out there. I wanted Tristan Jewel off the streets. Like, if those boys were not hurt by them, they should want whoever hurt their boys off the street. Would you not think that? Is that, because I know Josh's father and myself both were on the news and neither one of us felt like going to media, but the media came to us and I know the media is going to them. They're refusing the media interviews. Anyways, let me show you all this catch ass interview that they gave you by one of the local news channels there in Cal City. We just want to thank everyone in the community for all the support we've seen. We've felt so helpless. And seeing everybody out here really looking and helping out really means a lot. So, tell us what happened the night that she's missing. You can see that she's trying to from our yard. 
Okay. It was cold. I was gonna make a fire. There's a lot of wood in this area right here next to our house. I opened up the back gate. I'm throwing wood, bringing it inside the house. My wife's inside. She was actually wrapping gifts, so we thought it was a good idea that they, that our youngest two, go outside and play with chalk on the, the back patio. Do not let them go on the dirt in the backyard and keep them close. They was playing with chalk, and I came to the house. I saw them there. The one house, I came back out. I didn't see them now. I immediately went back in, asked my wife, did you see the boys? She said, no, they should be outside playing with chalk. I said, well, I didn't see them. So I came back outside and I started searching my backyard. I searched the whole thing. I realized that I left the gate open and I panicked, came inside the house, searched the house, made my wife. Once that hadn't pan out, I got in the van. I looked down the street both directions. It was getting dark, getting cold, and I got in the van and I hit a bunch of corners. I went down this street. I turned my light on. I searched. I searched. I called their names. Talked to a gentleman on the street on the other side over there. He didn't see me. So then I came home and I told my wife, we need to call the cops. Uh, it's getting dark and I need help. We got to get going. So I called the cops. Cops came. First thing they did was tell us to stay in the house so they can get a hold of us. And they had us just sitting there and we wanted to keep searching. But everybody came out in droves. And I wanted to thank you guys that night, but we couldn't go outside. Oh, yeah, the cops told us the best are out here. The best are out here searching. And we appreciate it. And nobody ever could tell, we could never talk to anybody. And that was the issue. We just want to thank everybody. We really want to and, thank you guys. Uh, please, if anybody has seen them, please call, let somebody know. It, it called the cops, called California the city police department, called them and let them know what you've seen, if you've seen anything. Our boys, they, they are going to be rambunctious, okay? Uh, they are going to be here in this area. And I really would like to go in the houses, but it's not because I want to invade people's privacy. I just want to know if make they sure. make sure. That's it. Because I don't, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. If you got any questions. Oh, no, you're good. Oh, okay. I, I was just going to say, you know, this is the first time we're hearing from you guys and I can't imagine what you guys are going through. I can't even fathom it. Um, for you guys, for people who are thinking uh, that there's some kind of foul play involved. Um, you know, we just spoke to the biological mother. She says she had a conversation with you guys um, and that she thinks there's some kind of foul play involved. That she thinks you guys did something. And that's understandable. What's your, what's your response to that? That's understandable. I would think the same thing. Yep. I mean, that's exactly the point. And if we can find out, find our babies, then guess what? That's that's no. And that's all I want is to find our babies. That's it. And I talked to her this morning, and I really wanted to tell her that um, I am completely sorry because we were entrusted with her children, and they came to us, and they became our children. And we named them. And they are, they are our children, and so we want them back. So please, if y'all could get back on your, what you guys are doing, we'll sh we should be able to get a hold of somebody, but they took all of our tech, so they wanted to, I guess, uh, just rule us out, which makes sense as part of the investigation. So that's pretty much it. Have you guys, um, you talked to the police all last night? Yes. Um, what? And so you, you guys willfully uh, gave them your everything. Yes. The car. Yes. Did they get a? How did they get a search warrant? Did, did I, you guys? I, oh, no I don't see why they got one, but they got one. Yeah. We would have let them take one, anything. We would have let them take everything. We let them come in and search with us. We we okay, asked them to come do that. What did they take? Just that, tech. That, and that's it. Like our phones. From the house. Oh, well, uh, I guess, should I answer that? Or? Answer it does, yeah. Okay. okay, so into the, into the, okay, and I guess, I don't even know. I see, yeah, we seriously, 
that like we needed to be out here. We did. Uh, again, we were told the best are out here looking already. Just to stay put, we gotta they have we gotta more questions. It's another thing. We there was literally a cop with us the whole time in and there. He was he had sitting down. We would ask, can we go help? They had to sit he down. Said, nope. He said, no, we got the best out there. So we it's need not, you guys here in case we have more questions. I don't want you guys thinking we, we didn't try. We actually we looked tried. before we called we the police. Looked <laughs> And I imagine the uh, mind-boggling part is the search for information. What happened? Where are they? Yes. Et cetera, et cetera. And we're, yeah. And, and just so we are able to present the information correctly, um, at what time did you guys notice your kids went missing? And at what time were they reported missing to the police? It's about, I, I believe, I think it was about 4.30, going on 5. It was getting dark, like I said. 5-ish. Five 5-ish. Five That's about it. That's when everything played out. And then when did you guys call the police to report that missing? I After we searched yeah. a little bit around here, we it was dark, so we definitely were, we got worried. Uh, would, would you say it was yeah. maybe within an hour, a couple hours? No, it was within minutes of us getting finished with our search. Okay. It was within minutes. Okay. What do you guys want people at home to understand um, about this situation for them, you know. I'll play the rest of that in a second. I just want to talk a little bit about what these people are saying. And does it does that make any sense to anybody? Does it make any sense? Why do you go inside to your wife who's wrapping presents, and why is she in the wrapping presents when the kids need to be watched? For one, if my husband is outside gathering firewood and my three and four year old are outside playing, I'm probably gonna be out there with them. I'm not gonna leave the dog as a babysitter. I don't know. It just seems really, really sketchy. The whole case is really, really sketchy. And with the sheriff saying there's, um, there's, a, there's no suspects, but there is a person of interest. Um, I hope that person of interest or the people of interest are Trezell and Jack from West. I don't think there's any other, I don't think there's anyone else who could possibly be a legit person of interest. If you guys can think of anyone, I hope you all could um, comment below. Let me know what you think. Hey Rhonda, how you doing? I'm good to see you in the chat. Are you familiar with the case? Have you seen the boys before? If you haven't seen the boys before, I want to show you their faces because that's what we're here for. This is Orrin and Orson West. They've gone missing as of December 21st, 2020, we found out. But um, as far as we know, they haven't really been seen for a couple of weeks before that at least so I mean we're hoping for the best but things are looking kind of grim right now um, to be honest I I think the caption below the picture says it all everybody's concerned almost everyone I run into the first thing they say is have you heard anything about the babies and you know that's the mayor talking so if the California mayor is getting everyone he talks to is asking, then it's serious business, you know. These, those, these kids need to be found. Something needs to be done. Someone knows something, and the someone is right here. This is the someone. These two right here. You guys, I wish I could turn the volume up on this a little bit. I want y'all to hear this interview so bad. Let me see if I can find another one. This is such an important part. Yeah. This part right here is just huge to me. Oh, 
Okay. From our yard. Okay. It was cold. I was gonna make a fire. There's a lot of wood in this area right here next to our house. I opened up the back gate. I'm throwing wood, bringing it inside the house. My wife's inside. She was actually wrapping gifts, so we thought it was a good idea. Can you guys hear that? Got our youngest to go outside and play with chalk on the, the back patio. Do not let them go on the dirt in the backyard. Keep Are them close. Like, Let's you know, play with chalk. Out. Came in the house. I saw them there. Went in the house. Came back out. I didn't see them there. I immediately went back in. Asked my wife, did you see the boys? She said no. They yeah, should be outside playing with chalk. That's perfect. It was cold. I was going to make a There's a lot of wood in this, this area right here next to our house. I opened up the back gate. I'm throwing wood, bringing it inside the house. My wife's inside. She was actually wrapping gifts, so we thought it was a good idea that they got our youngest to go outside and play with chalk on the back patio. Do not let them go on the dirt in the backyard. Just keep them close. So was playing with chalk. Came to the house, I saw them there. I went in the house, I came back out, I didn't see them there. I immediately went back in, asked my wife, did you see the boys? She said, no, they should be outside playing with chalk. I said, well, I didn't see them, so I came back outside and I started searching my backyard. I searched the whole thing. I realized that I left the gate open and I panicked, came inside the house, searched the house near my wife. Once that hadn't panned out, I got in the van. I looked down the street, both directions. It was getting dark, getting cold, and I got in the van and I hit a bunch of corners. I went down this street, I turned my light on, I searched, I searched, I called their names. I talked to a gentleman on the street on the other side over there, he didn't see me. So then I came home and I told my wife, we need to call the cops. Right, it's getting dark and I need help, we gotta get going. So I called the cops, the cops came, First thing they did was tell us to stay in the house so they can get a hold of us. And they had us just sitting there and we wanted to keep searching. But everybody came out in droves and I wanted to thank you guys that night, but we couldn't go outside. The cops told us the best are out here. The best are out here searching. And we appreciate it. And nobody ever could tell, we could never talk to anybody. And that was the issue. We just want to thank everybody. We really want to and, thank you guys. Uh, please, if anybody has seen them, please call. Let somebody know. It, it Call the cops. Call California the City Police Department. Call them and let them know what you've seen, if you see anything. Our boys, they, they are going to be rambunctious. Okay? Uh, they are going to be here in this area and I really would like to go in the houses but it's not because I want to invade people's privacy I just want to mm -hmm. know if make they sure. make sure that's it because I don't oh, go ahead I'm sorry if you got any questions oh no you're good oh, okay. I, I was just going to say you know this is the first time we're hearing from you guys and I can't imagine what you guys are going through I can't even fathom it um, for you guys for people who are thinking uh that there's some kind of foul play involved. Um, you know, we just spoke to the biological mother. She says she had a conversation with you guys um, and that she thinks there's some kind of foul play involved. That she thinks you guys did something. And that's understandable. What's your, what's your response to that? That's understandable. I would think the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, that's exactly the point. And if we can find our, find our babies, then guess what? That's, that's no. And that's all I want is to find our babies. That's it. And I talked to her this morning, and I really wanted to tell her that. Um, I am completely sorry because we were entrusted with her children, and they came to us, and they became our children. And we named them, and they are they are our children, and so we want them back. So please, if y'all could get back on your what you guys are doing, we we'll should we should be able to get a hold of somebody. But they took all of our tech, so they wanted to. I guess uh, just rule us out, which makes sense. That's part of the investigation. So that's pretty much it. Have you guys um, you talked to the police all last night? Yes. Um, what 
So you guys willfully gave them your everything. Yes. The car. Yes. Did they get a? How did they get a search? Did I I oh, no I idea. don't see why they got one, but they got one. Yeah. We would have let them take one, anything. We would have let them take everything. We let them come in and search with us. We we asked them to come do that. What did they take? Just tech. And that's it. It's like our phones. From the house. Yeah, I was like a search warrant because you oh, have to oh, have oh, should I answer that? Or? Answer it does, yeah. Okay. So Even into the, like the, into right. the Okay, I guess I don't even know. I see. Yeah, we seriously felt like we needed to be out here. We did. Uh, again, we were told the best are out here looking already just to stay put. They have more questions. There was literally a cop with us the whole time in there. He was he had sitting down. We would ask him to go help. They had to sit down. Said, nope. He said, no, we got the best out there. So we it's need not, you guys here in case we have questions. I don't want you guys thinking we, we didn't try. We actually we looked tried. before we called we police. Looked, yes. What's mute, up or down? What happened? Where are they? Yes. Et cetera, et cetera. And we're, yeah. And, and just so we are able to present the information correctly, um, at what time did you guys notice your kids went missing? And at what time were they reporting missing to the police? It's about, hey. I, I believe. Yeah. Is mute it was up or down? Going on five, it was getting dark, like I said. Five is mute up or down on this little we, thing? Everything is played out. Switch. Just if the show is orange or muted. I just don't know. Or if, or if demo is orange. A little bit around here, red. it was dark, so we that definitely were, we got worried. Hey, look, like it. Uh, you're starting to get comments. Maybe within so an hour or a couple hours. Like no, it was within minutes of us getting finished with what I searched. Okay. It was within minutes. You just recalled it, baby. So right now. No, Dad, I'm going to mute this TV. How should I mute the TV? I mean, uh, yeah, no, you would just go right here and hit this. For them that turned those red. No. I, did, I didn't want to stop it. Okay. Even that, there's no way to mute this. Are you trying to mute your voice? I was just going through see, it. this, when it's I did difficult. that, it turned that red. That means it's I, muted. I mean, everybody's making so sure. I had the, 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 my wife was muted. I'm like, you know, their own the conclusion. Not the TV. The TV's They don't know anything. And look. We don't, you we're can tell not right sure, exa like everything, we're not sure, we, we said what we knew, desktop, and that's what's if anybody on your TV has seen desktop, them, audio, uh, if that's moving up and down, or anything, that means your TV's working, please call Mike the audio, police department. You that's you talking, whenever you see it moving, they, that's how you know uh, that you're I talking, I have older pictures, all my I'm glad you're getting comments now, phone. or at least that comment, a lot of people have to do that, Talk about kids what kind of what kind of boys are these? It's very playful, it's very rambunctious, and they do love to wrestle. They they do love to kind of get rough with each They're other. Kids. They're kids. Of course, they would love to go out. But we would, so during the pandemic, we weren't trying to go, you know, out here, and so we stay inside. Yeah. Yes. yes, we did. We searched before we called the cops. That's, that's, that's what we were yeah. saying. What time did they come up missing? They came missing right before it got dark. <laughs> and then we called. I, I searched the property. I even drove around the, the whole, this neighborhood right here. I even talked to a gentleman on that side, one of those streets over there. I said, did you see my, some little black kids? And yeah, the rest of I was going to come, but when I came back home, I decided to call the cops. So what do I turn this they thing to when I'm ready to, when I'm ready to uh, go back to talking? What do I turn this knob to? <laughs> Nothing, you just flip that back on. You just flip that back on. Okay. Oh, oh, you see. No, they were in the backyard. And the so back gate was open. And the back gate was I'm open, and I was getting wood from this lock. Right right right. 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 when, when I turned that knob all, all the way right. to the left so that you could hear. The more this way that I turn the knob, the less you hear it. They still hear it the same. 
Now I talk. You can hear yourself. But here. That way, you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is the intuition? What is the sense you get? What do you think happened to your voice? Do you think someone took them? Do you think they're lost? Do you think. Yeah, definitely. I definitely know they're we'll not walking around. They're not. These are just test time. runs. They're, 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 they're they're not these are just test runs, y'all. Roam around. Uh, you know, they're they're a, a, they definitely. I think definitely with Heather. What, any more bags? No, no, I said. There, there might be a bag out there. That was my assumption. Oh, there's a bag no. out back. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. In the can no. out back. Oh. Okay, you guys. Can you hear me? We just want to thank everyone in the community for all the support we've seen. We felt so. Okay. Okay. Mic check, mic check. Can you hear me? Um, hold on. Make sure everybody. Alright, can you hear me? If you can hear me, just. Say yes in the chat or give me a thumbs up. I'm not sure. If, let's see. If y'all can hear me, let me give a thumbs up. Hey, Kenny, thanks for watching. If you can hear me, can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? Hello? Hey, um, can anyone hear me? Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? Mic check, mic check. Say, say hey or give me a thumbs up or wave or something if you can hear me. Okay, I'm having a technical issue with my mic again. I kind of figured it was pretty numbers, but I don't think my mic is working, you guys. Can y'all hear me? All right, now that I paused the video, how do I turn my mic back on, babe? I'm glad you didn't go. Who? You can hear me right now, Pop. Can you hear me right now? <laughs> Say yes if you can. Hey Courtney, good to see you. Did you see, hear me say hi, Courtney? Okay, I can't hear my mic then. Hello. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's so weird when I can't hear my mic through my headphones. Anyways, at least I can see the chat now. But anyways, what do you guys think about that, um, that interview with the, that was the adoptive parents, um, the ones who reported the boys missing on December 21st. What do you guys think about that? I got, I mean, just th throw any random theory out there. Do you think a random stranger could have picked them up? Do you think the bio mom came through and picked them up and took them somewhere safe? 
do you think a random stranger has taken them, um, like Trezell was talking about, the um, Pizza Gate thing that he said to someone, like that, well, whoever he said that to. Anyways, um, what do you guys think is going on here? Would y'all, do y'all think the kids are safe? Do y'all think what do y'all or what do y'all think about this this interview all together? The way they acted, maybe anything they said that maybe I didn't notice that I didn't mention before. What is your take on the interview? If you're a parent, look at it from your point of view as a parent and just think what if your kid was missing how would you feel and how would you handle your your interview with the media and I do get it that they are that they're trying to um, you know they're trying to deal with something they're trying to be strong and have other children I understand that I get it really and you know I, I went through something where I had to be strong for my other two children but I also know that there's some sometimes there's some pretty raw emotions that are kind of hard to hold back and especially when a kid is you just don't know where the kid is and what is going on and it's a baby oh my god like I, like I said earlier, I don't know if you guys could hear whenever I was talking about KK trying to go get a Reese cup that time, but y'all, that was the worst two minutes of my life. One or no, not it was definitely one of the worst times of my life. Well, let's put it that way. I was scared to death. I was terrified. Like I really, the worst thoughts went through my head. I, I really didn't think I was ever gonna see that baby again. Because I pay attention to things like this. And I know how fucked up people are. Excuse my French there. Um, what is this? I need to click off of that. Sorry about that, y'all. Anyone have anything to say about the, um, about the interview? about the West. I'd like to know what you all think about the West, about Trezell and Jacqueline. Do you guys think that they had anything to do with the boys' disappearance, or do you all think that they're completely innocent and that I'm just giving them a hard time? I don't want to give these folks a hard time if they just lost their kid and, you know, their kids and they're going through it, but because, like, you know, Jacqueline, that, that was basically the only thing she said, right? Whenever they a asked Jacqueline how she felt, she said, we're going through it. Well, uh, if they're going through it, I definitely don't want to be the one to... The one to, you know, make it worse for them or to make them feel any kind of way. But they look like they look like they should be suspects to me and I think that they are the person of interest that the chief of police talks about um, I don't know if you all have seen the interview with him but there was several things that he said that I, I don't know he, he was very quiet about what happened. He's very tight-lipped about the evidence they found. All he would say is that it's, like I said before, he, all he would say is that they had electronics. Um, the bio mom's family, the bio mom, by the way, is Ryan Dean, um, for those who are just joined, and um, her family has a GoFundMe account that has raised so far over a hundred and twenty two thousand dollars and with that money they have put up two billboards so far 
one of the billboards is electronic, one is not electronic, but um, the first one is, um, let's see, uh, they, they're around, the, the, the first two are around the areas where, where the boys come missing, but um, where they were thought to have come missing, but the third one that they're trying to raise the money for right now, um, they're planning on putting that near the, um, t the, um, let's see, it's a kind of, um, uh, type of Mount, Mount Takapi, Takapi, is that, is that how you say it? Mount, Mount Takapi, or Takapi. Anyways, that's where they're wanting to put the third one, and I think it's a great idea. Um, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I just looked at a map whenever I heard the word. Um, I was checking to see where it was in conjunction to Bakersfield and uh, and California City, and it's right there, just you know, just right within that triangle there, where people need to be really looking hard for these boys, and they're gonna find these kids. When they find the kids, that's that's when the case will build around. Trizel and Jacqueline. I hate to say it, but they may, they may not see a day in jail for a long, long time. They might not, they might not ever go to jail for what they did. I'm not saying that they for sure did it, or what they allegedly did. I'm sorry. But, um, let me see, what else? was there uh, that I was wanting to say. Um, let's see here. Of course, we're, we're looking, because they are kids, we're looking from the inside out. You always go from the inside out with kids because they are three and four, so whoever is the last person who saw them or whoever is closest to them is most likely responsible for their disappearance. Three-year-olds and four-year-olds don't have a huge so social circle, and they don't usually run into many strangers without their parents, right? But they, I mean, Jacqueline says they were educated on stranger danger. So, anyways, the police had searched a five-mile perimeter around the home. Um, They've done two um, search warrants of the home where, as I said before, all they collected basically, well, they took two bags of stuff. Um, as far as physical evidence, I don't know what they have or if they have anything like that. I do know that the evidence that they do have, whatever it is um, that they collected that is possibly something or could be something is electronics. I don't know what electronics would have to do with the case. I don't know if maybe their their correspondence back and forth maybe has something to do with um, where he said he was at at the time or if he even really hit those corners that he said he hit or just, I, I don't know, you know how it is. They police use phones for several different things. They use them to track where people go and to see who they talk to, to see if there's um, any other suspicious stuff going on. Um, but, uh, okay, so after after two months missing, the police are obviously um, ruling it foul play as of right now. Um, Cal City Police Chief says that uh, that um, basically every agency, um, which is I think four different agencies are working on the case right now. Um, if, if there's four agencies assisting with the investigation, I'm going to assume that's um, going to be at the FBI, Cal City, and um, Maybe, uh, maybe the, uh, Bakers, 
the police department because uh, they were last seen in Bakersfield, right? I would think the Bakersfield Police Department would be involved as well. Um, the fourth, I'm not really sure, but um, they that's uh, that's definitely the ones that I would I would guarantee are involved, and I'm sure are involved because I actually have. Um, some phone numbers that I'm going to give out at the end for that, but um, Orrin West has a, has a broken left leg also. I don't know if you all knew that, but in his description, as I was reading through some stuff, I found a really, really interesting little fact, and um, yeah, Orrin had a broken left leg. I don't know if that meant that he had it in the past or if he currently had it, but if he currently has a broken left leg, I don't know many people, um, many children who can get very, more, or even adults who can get very far on a broken leg at all. And especially a child that little, you would think that a cast or even an air cast would be pretty tough for them to get around on. I don't know. That, that was another one for me that was just, just a, like, really? Like, it's almost like whenever I was watching Letitia Stout sit there and give all, give interviews and, and she quit, she's another one that quit messing with the media, but the way they found, you know, Gannon was from, Gannon Stout, he was from Colorado. He lived in Colorado. And he was found in a suitcase under a bypass in Escambia, Florida. You know, Letitia Stout really thought that she outsmarted the cops on that when she thought she had committed the perfect crime. This woman, oh, this is a whole other case. We're going to cover this another time. This one is my, I'm so passionate about this, you guys. Gannon, G Man Stout, God rest his little soul. He's such a precious little angel, and I followed that case, and I cannot wait to see her go on trial and try. You guys have to see her letter to the judge. If you get a chance when you get off here, look up, um, let's see, who did it? Who did the YouTube video for, um, Oh my God, um, it's a crime with Linda. Look up, it's a crime, and Linda has, um, she has where Letitia Letitia Stout wrote the judge a letter. Just look for that one, and I promise you, like, she reads it, and she reads it perfectly. It's it's ridiculous because she she like I knew. She knew. She wasn't going to, you know, she, she felt like, and that was another, but that was when I almost started my channel, and I wanted to so bad at that point, but I was also going through so much in my personal life because of my own son's murder, like, I just, I couldn't bring myself at the moment to... I couldn't pull myself together enough to to um, do the research. I, I was I was following it closely, but I, I couldn't put myself on camera. You know, I was falling apart inside as well. But back to what I was saying. This reminds me so much of that case where she was out doing everything and anything and like made like moved all the way to another state and made trips to Florida and done all these things while no, while she was hiding a body, for one, of an 11-year-old little boy who would never do anything to anyone. He was waiting for his dad to get home. His dad was going to work, and, like, he literally was waiting for his dad to get home so he could play his Nintendo Switch. Like, that was his big thing. Is that he was grounded from his Switch and wanted to play. She kept him home from school. 
and did God knows what to him. They said he was not only shot and stabbed, but bludgeoned as well. Why do you need to do all that to an 11 year old? Anyways, like I said, that's a whole other case we'll cover another time. I want to wait till Letitia is in court or maybe till after her court and when it's over we'll talk about that. But yeah, we definitely are going to talk about um, G-Man because Gannon South is, um, is one of the reasons why I started my channel. But right now we need to put the boys back up. Um, actually, before we do that, what we're going to do is we're going to play a short news clip about the boys. Uh, well, Alex, I can tell you this, speaking to the adoptive parents was incredibly telling as for the first time since the kids went missing. They're telling us exactly what happened from their perspective. Now, it's also important to mention that the community here, a lot of neighbors told me that the parents have been virtually absent from all search efforts, raising a lot of concern out here in California City. But the adoptive parents told me that's because they've been busy with the police investigation and that police told them that they don't need to be out there searching because there's already an uh, adequate amount of people doing so. I came in the house, I saw them there, I went in the house, I came back out, I didn't see them now. Trizel West details the moment his two adopted boys, three-year-old Orson and four-year-old Orin, went missing Monday night from their California city home. Moments before, West says he was gathering wood to start a fire. I went up the back gate, I'm throwing wood, bringing it inside the house. My wife's inside. She was actually wrapping gifts, so we thought it was a good idea that they got our youngest to go outside and play with chalk on the, the back patio. Shortly after, Wes says he no longer saw the boys on the patio. He asked his wife, Jacqueline, if she saw them. She said no. That's when he says panic set in. I realized that I left the gate open and I panicked, came inside the house, searched the house, me and my wife. Once that hadn't pan out, I got in the van. I looked down the street, most directions. It was getting dark, getting cold. West said he then called the police within minutes. Since then, California City Police, the FBI, and the Kern County Sheriff's Office have been investigating. Police searched the couple's home Tuesday night, then interviewed the couple at police headquarters. Meantime, multiple search efforts were launched, which continued Wednesday, including with the help of the boy's biological mother, Ryan Dean. She says she's worked hard to get her life on track and wanted to get custody of her boy's back eventually but now she thinks that will never happen and is blaming the adoptive parents they did something I feel like they did something and they know something they did something and I feel my kids is somewhere around here I can feel it and I feel like they're in the house and I feel like they did something Trizel and Jacqueline say they understand the frustration she thinks you guys did something and that's understandable. What's your, what's your response to that? That's understandable. I would think the same thing. Yep. I mean, that's exactly the point. And if we can find our, find our babies, then guess what? That's, that's no. And that's all I want is to find our babies. That's it. Some residents and family members of the boys would also get involved during the interview. Y'all was supposed to take care of my nephew. But the West are standing firm as the search efforts continue. We're going through it. It's difficult. I, I mean, everybody's making their own, you know, their own conclusions. They don't know anything. We don't, we're not sure, exa like everything, we're not sure. We, we said what we knew. And now back out here live, I should say that the tension in this community is just raising by the minute. Right now, it seems like there's some kind of makeshift memorial candles and uh, balloons here on the east side of me as if something they know has already happened to these kids. Now, I should also mention that the California City Police and various agencies were back out here on the scene again today, and their focus was uh, their focus was on that backyard area where the parents said that's where, you know, their kids were last seen. Uh, some of the witnesses out here, some of the neighbors told me that a couple hours after our interview with the parents, they saw them leave with authorities again. We reached out to the California City Police Department. We asked them, hey, has there been any arrest made? Have the parents been detained? They said they could not confirm that. 
We're live in California City by On Wang, 23 ABC, connecting you. All right. So what do you guys think after hearing the mom talk and all that, like, what's... Hello, welcome back to True Crime and Murder Mystery. so much Rhonda I appreciate that um, what do you think Rhonda do you are you familiar with the case have you have you been watching or have you followed at all like after after hearing the biological mom and seeing the adoptive parents do their interview and hearing the story about how the boys were playing with the dog and the dad was out there and how he went running in the house and he he bent all the corners or whatever. Like, what do you think? I don't either. So you think the same thing I do. You think that they, they definitely did something to those babies. Yeah. Do you think do you think the babies made it from Bakersfield to Cal City? I mean, all the neighbors are saying that they never seen Orin and Orson. Yeah, it's sad that more people aren't talking about this case because it's um, even though it's in a place where you would think it would get covered, you know, very, um, by a very large art audience, it's actually not being covered by very many people at all, and it really needs to be. People really should be paying attention, and these, you know, these faces could be seen anywhere, and, you know, Trizel brought up, I don't know if you guys I'm sorry about that, y'all. Um, yeah, I feel like I feel like they hurt both the boys too, and I feel like maybe, maybe they were, maybe one of the boys saw what they did to the other one, and they were afraid he would tell, so they did away with that other because they, you know, they came as a pair. And I think the other kids are afraid if any of them know anything. I think they're terrified, especially the two fosters. I'm in Louisville, Kentucky. Are you in Louisville too? Welcome to my stream, by the way, Rhonda. It's good to see you here. Let's see. Oh, cool. Oh, Lord, I just lost her. Hold on. All right, so I'm glad I finally got some conversation in here. I'm trying to get back to it. I just, I, I, where I can't see the, um, I can't see my chat on my computer screen, so I have to use my phone now. And I am not good with YouTube. I'm not good with Facebook. Um, that's why I was doing my stream on YouTube, y'all. <clears throat> I was I started on YouTube, but it's looking like it's going to be a Facebook stream because I feel like on I was there. You're you're just right down the street in Henderson, so that's not very, that very far from where I'm at. Henderson County is nice. Yeah, it's awful that that it's that you're here because of this story, but 
I'm glad you made it because, you know, that's another person that's aware. And if you share the story or, you know, even even mention it, the next person might mention it to the next person. And then, you know, then they might tell the next person. And, you know, everyone has a smartphone. So if they hear these names, they'll maybe look them up. And, you know, they might think, oh, my goodness, I, I saw those boys. Or, oh, my goodness, you know, I, I, I think. I think I know who has those boys or, you know, if, if the mom is right and they're safe somewhere, which I hope, I really, really hope is what is going on. I, I just, I think the same thing as you. I think that, I think that Trisella and Jacqueline did something bad. And, you know, I've had other I've, I've heard other people, um, I was watching some other um, talk that was like a banter show about, um, and there was like also awareness about this um, case, and they said that these kids were cash cows. Well, yeah, one of the boys was mentally challenged, and they did draw a check on him, but at the same time, if they already adopted him and they're taking care of his day-to-day -day needs, I know from having kids myself that there's not any check that you get from, I mean, I'm, I'm sure the government wasn't giving them no amount that was like, I don't know how much they actually give for children or for like all that, but I don't think there's any amount that was worth, um, like if, if they if they really wanted to harm these kids, they're they're putting as much out as they're getting back in the in the paycheck each month is what I'm saying. It costs just as much to feed, clothe, bathe, you know, have bedrooms, lights, the eat the whole nine yards. These people have six children. Thank you so much, Rhonda. I appreciate your shares. And I promise the the um, the Dean family will appreciate your shares as well. I can't say that the West, um, I mean, I'm sure some of the West family still believes that they're innocent and, and um, will appreciate it, but I think, honestly, there's a reason why Trizel and Jacqueline have stopped talking to media. I don't think it's because they think that anything's directed in the wrong direction because the chief of police just said in an interview, um, was it last week, maybe? It might have been, it might have been earlier this week, or actually this is the end of the week, so yeah, it probably was earlier this week. Actually. He just mentioned that there is no suspects, so why would they have a reason to not talk to the media? And that's just really, really suspicious. Really, really fishy thing. If you don't have anything to hide, why not talk? Your kids are missing. Get, get it out there by any means possible, by every means possible. strangers like me, you know, out of their lawyer probably, yeah, I didn't even think about legal stuff like that, oh, hey, Susie, hey, Pat, how y'all doing, yeah, I didn't think about legal representation or anything like that, I wasn't thinking that they would probably need re legal representation because their kids are missing, you know, they're not, they're not dead, even though they have had a memorial service, kind of like they are dead, that the neighbors or, and them had a memorial service for the kids, and I thought that was kind of sad, like, I, I don't know if y'all noticed in the news clip, but they were talking about how the neighborhood memorial is if they knew something already, and I think, I think a lot of people feel in their hearts that something, something bad's happened. But 
but either way, the kids need justice. They need to be found. They need, you know, people um, check out that fundraiser that the um, that the Dean family has up. For their, I think they have it under the name Score and Orson West rather than um, Classic and Saint. <laughs> because they weren't known as Classic and Saint after they were adopted, and that was just the names that their mom gave them when they were born. I just wanted to put that out there to so you guys know that. Um, let's see. Uh, um, there was a couple of other things. And, and I don't know, they just didn't show any emotion, and, and like I said, that again it could have been shock, it could have been anything, no one knows how they would react if it were to happen, but oh, shit. it's okay, go, go, come here, come here, girl, she had gotten them back because it's awful what's happened but I'm sure I'm sure she probably had some kind of legal representation um, I think someone was right yeah we'll have this okay. but I mean the mom feels like they're alive and a mom's gut instinct is usually right maybe maybe that's why they came up missing is because Maybe the West family knew that the mom was going to get them, going to try to get them back. Not real sure, but I do know that they have, um, the, the chief of police said that they do have some type of, um, some type of digital evidence. I'm not sure, but he didn't give any, he's so, he was so tight-lipped about it, like, I couldn't make much of what he was saying, but, um, the authorities do think it's foul play with that, and I think they're right. Let's see, sorry about that, Chet. Um, December 21st is when they were first, I'm sorry about that, I should have, um, I should have gone back for people who joined a little bit late. Um, December 21st is when they were first recorded missing by the West family. So, um, that's what we know. But when they moved to Cal City from Bakersfield, all the neighbors never seen them. So, the move happened a few weeks prior. I'm assuming, I'm not real sure, but I'm... I'm not thinking that Orrin and Orson made it from Bakersfield to Cal City. So they they could have been gone longer. So two months at least. We're we're hitting the two month two month mark coming up here soon. But it's um, you know, they say after seventy two hours it's it's a pretty grim outlet so after two months when you've got a three-year-old and a four-year-old and one of which has a broken leg you know i just 
just don't see them being out there safe and sound. But, and, and the dog didn't leave with them. The dog didn't bark when whoever took them left. Something is not adding up, y'all. I don't know. Something doesn't make sense. And I, I want to also ask, I mean, by looking at the pictures, the kids don't look abused in these pictures, obviously. But do y'all think there could have been abuse going on and maybe that's why the boys were killed? Because maybe they were afraid that the boys were going to tell? And there's always that, you know, there's always that possibility. You never know. I think you're right, Rhonda. I think they're going to find them somewhere. Just, I, I just, I'm getting really bad vibes on this one. I don't like it that they're gone, but that's what I think too. That's why I liked your comment. Why what? Yeah, it's it's definitely it's definitely one of the most tragic things that's going on. Well, actually, um, there's another case that I found out about that is just oh my god, that's another one that I have to cover. Um. It just recently happened, you guys. Uh, there is a um, another kid from San Francisco, and this was a baby, a little bitty baby. Like we're talking, a infant that was basically a newborn that got beat to death by her parents, and. Um, I, I think this was, this was one of the sickest things I've seen, you know. Um, she, she made it, or he made it to the ER, I'm not sure if it was a boy or a girl, I have to, I have to, um, research the case, but the baby made it to the ER and passed away a few hours later. But the um, parents' names were like his. The man's real, real name was Ray Ray Darn. His first name Ray Ray, last name Darn, and then um, the lady's name was uh, Marilyn Northington. I believe was the mother's name, Marilyn Northington. And when I when I saw that that one. It literally like brought tears to my eyes. We're gonna cover that one later on too. Um, we're gonna do that one on a Sunday as well when we do the the things for missing kids. I, I like to do. Oh, I, I'm sorry, you guys. Um, my layout that I had for YouTube was um, gonna be I was gonna do missing kids and or missing people on Sundays. Some cases will be solved. Some cases will be unsolved. But it'll always be about, um, you know, missing people or, you know, some of them might even be cold cases that are people who are still missing. So, um, uh, what's wrong with people? Yeah, that's the same thing I said is what is wrong with people? Like, here lately, we've had... Chris Watts killed his family. Leticia Stout killed her stepson. Um, uh, what's uh, the, the other one? The, the new. Oh my gosh, I can't remember. I've already forgotten his name. There have been so many lately. Anyways, yeah, people have lost their minds. And it seems like, oh, I'm sorry, I, it was Barry Morgue that I was thinking of. His wife came up missing, and she's still missing, and Barry is still coming up with theory after theory that a cougar, or that some kind of big cat dragged her off into the woods, and then that something happened with her bike going down a ravine, I don't know. But that's all a crock, too, but like you said, it's... Something's going on. 
Yeah, Susan Smith, that was another one. So she could be, and Casey Anthony was another one. Both thought they could have a man that didn't want to have children. You know, that Susan Smith killed her boys because the guy she was with didn't want a woman to have children. And he made it clear to her, just like Anthony Lazaro made it clear to Casey Anthony that he didn't want a woman with children. And Casey walked, I mean, but yeah, Susan, Susan was another one that I just, I, I can't believe what she did to her boys and the fact that she could have saved them and she did nothing at all. She didn't, that woman, Susan Smith was heartless. Yeah, Rhonda, Susan, Susan Smith is heartless. Anybody who's got kids and don't, and, and could, that any, anybody that could hurt a little innocent, they're so innocent and they're so precious, you know? And my youngest is 11 right now, and I still feel like she's just a little baby. I feel like my 16 year old is just a little baby. I feel like she don't know anything about the world and like they're both just so innocent and like they're so little. Like I don't, I don't, as a parent, I don't see how they hurt their kids. And if you are, if, you know, if your heart's big enough to adopt or maybe you just wanted to, to get the money for the adoption, I, I don't know how it works. I thought people paid money to adopt. I didn't know you get paid money when you adopt. But I don't know anything about adoption. But what I do know is if you're going to adopt kids, you should love them and take care of them. You should give them what the biological parents couldn't give them because that's probably why they were given up is because that mom was probably scared to death that she couldn't give the children the life they deserve or maybe because Child Protective Services removed them from the parent because they thought the parent wasn't going to be able to give the children the life that they deserved and if you ask me kids who go through that and have to go through a foster system and uh, um, an adoption system and all that and who know that, you know, someone didn't want them, I feel like they deserve it even more. They deserve to be loved even harder. And you, you love them. Sorry, you guys, I just lost my chat again. Every time I look down to see what y'all are saying, my phone's done. Locked itself back up. Give me one second. I got to check, check the chat to see what y'all are talking about. You good? You good? Oh, yeah, I'm good. Oh, your oldest is 33. And even though your oldest is that old, you because mine would be, my oldest would be 22 right now. And I guarantee you, I would still feel like he's a big baby because when he was 18, I felt like he was still my little baby. Yeah, some people need training. It's sad that because, you know, I had my first child whenever I was a young teenager and the maternal instinct kind of kicked in when I was pregnant. Like, we moved into a kind of, you know, run-down place. I lived with my parents still because I was a kid. And my, when my maternal instinct started kicking in and I was pregnant, and I was big and pregnant at this time, y'all, I put walls up. Like, this place, there was beams and, like, like the rooms were separated, but there was no drywall. I literally put drywall up, learned how to do drywall, drywalled the whole room, bought the paint, painted it blue. Um, I got the decals, the, um, the baby Looney Tunes decals at my baby shower 
and I had everyone buy me baby hoodies and stuff at my baby shower. And by the time I had Josh, he had a full nursery that looked like it was, didn't even belong in the place we lived at at the time. Like everyone who knows me and came over there and saw the nursery, they know like it was the only finished room in the house at the time. And um, like we had to move in and stuff, but at the time it was supposed to be like, you know, we were supposed to fix the place up and everything, which that room was great. It turned out to be an awesome room for us. Oh, married at 14, had a baby at 14. You got started younger than I did. I didn't marry my husband um, until we were, we'd already been dating for eight years before we got married. Oh, hey, Asia. What's up? Asia, my niece is here. She's having a baby, you guys. We were just talking about how we had our kids young. Asia's actually grown. She's she's 18. She's having her first little girl. She has an idea what she's in store for. Girls will drive you crazy. <laughs> Need to go get cigarettes and don't want to get out in the cold, y'all. <laughs> oh my goodness, you had your baby when you were 14. I love you too, Asia. Wow. You're a stronger woman than me. At 14, I was I was too worried about like if my makeup was right and if my hair was fixed. Like that was freshman year in high school. Like I did have the boyfriend that I end up thinking I was gonna live happily ever after with the one that is was my son's father. Um, but we were definitely not thinking about having Josh yet. But um, we were. Things were getting, things were serious. Or actually, no, not at, not at 14. I didn't start dating him until I was 15, but yeah, things were serious at that time already. It's crazy how young uh, kids get into relationships. My daughter's been with a guy that we don't really, I don't know, like things just didn't work out the way that we thought it was going to and it, she's been with him for about two years now and he's um I don't know he's not the worst person she could be with but he's not definitely not who my husband would choose if he had his pick but you know she she's in love for the first time and she's enjoying it so I just want her to be happy. I've been in this relationship that I'm in right now for 21 years. I got with him when my son was a year old, almost, well, almost a year old. But 15 years is a long time. I remember whenever we were on 15, and like at that point, I think I was ready to renew my uh, wedding vows at the time. We didn't end up doing it. But 15 years is definitely a long time to be with one person. <clears throat> didn't finish sixth grade. Oh, wow. Why not? I guess back then, did, was it, was it, was it, it wasn't, re was it not required to go? Or was it just if were you emancipated when you get married, you get emancipated? I know my mom got married super young too. I think she was like fourteen or fifteen when she got married the first time. And um, she just kinda did her own thing too. Was it a like a controlling thing that he wouldn't let you or um, he wouldn't let you because you were pregnant or dang you would think that like school would send somebody to come and check or whatever but so did, was, did you stay with that one for 15 years or the one you're with now is 15 
15 years in. I know it definitely takes two. BJ and I have argued and yeah, when he when jealousy can be it, it it's they call it the green eyed monster for a reason. I'm sorry you stuck with him so long. He sounds like he was a douchebag. Here's my French again, folks, but call him like I see him. You must be allowed to wear what you want. See who you want, do what you want. And if a person doesn't trust you, they should keep it moving. But at least you got three boys out of it. That's the great thing about it. My son's father and I were friends until he passed on. And um, I, don't, I didn't regret my son at all. You know, I was so glad that even though things didn't work out, we were always better friends than, you know, boyfriend and girlfriend or whatever anyways, but I was so glad we had Josh. Like, even though I ended up getting married, and that was one of the, another cool thing about it. When I got married, my son was big enough to get me away. He was already seven, so that was pretty cool. Or no, what was it? Was he eight at the time? Or no, he was seven. Oh, they're loggers, so they're big, strong guys. You had three big, strong boys. You had early man. That's pretty cool. Where'd Asia go? Asia, you still with us? Did you leave the conversation? You think Asia left us? Seven grandchildren? I can't wait until, well, actually, I can wait, but, like, I'm excited for when my girls get old enough to have babies. And do you like being a nana? Do they call you nana, granny, grandma, or do they call you? I know you're awful young to be a grandmother, so they probably don't call you grandma, right? Six girls. Oh, my goodness. My mom's mother was, uh, she was very young when my brother was born, and she was like, I don't want to be called grandma, so he started calling her mammy. But that's, that's a, uh, me ma, aw, yeah, that's adorable. Me ma, that sounds kind of like what my son called my mom, he called her G ma. Oh my god, I've been on for an hour and a half, you guys. I can't believe I've been on for an hour and a half. The conversation is just flowing. I've been sitting here talking to you for a long time, Rhonda. We've been talking for about a half an hour. Just off, I got off topic and started talking about the kids. I could sit here and talk about my kids all night, though, when, when it comes to talking about the nieces and nephews and kids. Yeah, I could. Like, it, it gets... Like they, because there's always if there's always something to say about them, they're always doing something. The um, the social media, the new TikTok and all that stuff, like they're so crazy, dude. And they are something else. Oh my God, where my chat go? Hold on one second, I lost it again. See over there is my comments. Okay, I see you. I'm back. Sorry about that. 
I lost my my chat for a second. I was like looking for my chat, and I looked over there at the computer screen, and all I seen was my own comments. And I was commenting asking if you guys can hear earlier. Anyways, oh, you have two daughters as well. Oh, so you have. Oh, wow, well, you have. You have five all together. Hi, Franklin. Thanks for watching. Sorry you got here late. We've been talking about the Orson brothers. I mean, um, Orson and Orin, the West brothers, um, three and four, gone missing since December 21st of 2020 um, that we know of. At Cal City, California. California City, California. They were originally from Bakersfield. They haven't been seen since they were in Bakersfield. And there are four different departments working on it right now. You guys, if you have any information on these boys at all, I mean, if you, like, they're taking serious tips only, so please don't call these numbers and um, give them any um, full crap or anything like that because this is a really, really serious case. And this is their photos, um, hold on, where is it at, over here, yeah, this is their photos right here, um, this is Orn and Orson West, um, you guys, um, you know, you, you, you'll know if you see a little boy with a broken leg, a left leg, um, and their faces are very recognizable, look at them, I mean, they're, they're precious, you, they, they, anyways, you can contact the FBI LA field office at 310-477-6565, the California City PD at 760-373-8606, and the Bakersfield PD at 661-327-7100. And if I spoke too quickly, just give me a slowdown in the chat. And can I get those numbers again? And I will give you those numbers again. Um, and their mom, her name is Ryan Dean. She was going to try to get them back. And apparently... They came up missing right around the time that she was wanting to get them back. So I'm really curious about that. I want to look more into that. And I think um, I think we should definitely chat a little bit more about that at a later date. Like I said, I have been on for almost two hours. And I'm going to cut it short soon. There's another streamer in the house. So i got to share the share of my equipment and I don't know if I'm stepping on anybody's toes right now but I thought this was really important to get out there. I really wanted everyone to know that these guys have been gone for two months and it's it's time to get justice for these boys. It's time for them to be found. I've got a feeling they're going to be found in some kind of horrible condition like I hope their mom is right and that they are in a warm house, safe somewhere. That's that would be ideal. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, Stephanie, how are you doing? I didn't even see you there. How are you doing? I just looked down and I I, I can't see my chat. Whenever I'm looking straight ahead, my camera's over there, and then I got my. My computer's over there, but it's not showing anything but my comments. But, yeah, we've been on for an hour and a half, almost two hours, um, talking about Orin, Orson West. They are missing from California City, California, but originally from Bakersfield. December 21st is when their, their adopted parents ador uh, um, had reported them missing, but... We don't really think that they went missing when the adoptive parents reported it. So, um, when you get, when you 
you get a chance to go back and you know watch the interviews I want you to watch the interviews and definitely drop a comment or two in the chat about what you think do you think they act sketchy and do you think what do you think about the bio bomb um, and what do you think about the fact you know that the Dean family is who has raised all this money for these billboards while the West family has been sitting in their house not allowed to do anything they're just not allowed to even go outside you guys remember do you guys remember what they said in the interview but yet the media says they refuse to comment so allegedly they're refusing to comment anyways yeah something bad has happened to Stephanie something bad happened to these kids I got a feeling these boys right here have had have been harmed in some type of way I don't know what I, I can't put my finger on what it is I don't know why um, I think I don't know why Jacqueline hasn't come forward yet I think because Trezell had so much to say about what he was doing during the time when the boys came up missing and how he just couldn't believe he left the gate unlocked and all that and he hit some of the corners. Um, I really think that he's he's got something to do. I don't know, like I said, I can't put my finger on it, but he's got a little something more to do with it than he's saying. And we're going to find out what it is. These Someone's going to find me. Someone knows something. The kids are going to be found. And when they are found, the truth is going to come out. And I just really, really hope that uh, if Jacqueline didn't have anything to do with it, if she didn't hurt these kids, if she wasn't in on whatever happened, because Trezell admits to being the last one to see these kids alive. So, apparently, I mean... And not even apparently, uh, it's obvious that he was the last one who's seen them alive. Or else he wouldn't be telling everyone that, right? I mean, it is what it is. So, what do you guys think? Like I said, it, with toddlers, we're working, uh, especially toddlers, one of which who has a broken left leg, work from the inside out. It's not often. Look up the statistics about how often it is that a child this age gets taken by someone who is not a closely related family member or a very, very close to the family, someone very, very close to the family and to the kids. It's really, really super rare. I don't know what the exact statistic is, but I can guarantee you it is super duper rare. Oh yeah, Louisville's in here. I'm a Louisville girl. I'm a Louisville girl too. Louisville, Kentucky. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that most everyone in here is from somewhere in Kentucky right now. Um, Franklin didn't say where he was from, but I'm thinking he's from, you know, you can answer to. I'm reaching, I think I'm reaching most of the people around here. But you guys, I might have to go ahead and go. Um, I've been on for an hour and 45 minutes. So I'm going to let y'all go for now. And hopefully you guys keep these faces in your mind. Keep the story in your mind. Um, tell your friends about it. Share out, share this out where you can in missing groups. There's not enough people talking about it. It's been two months since they were reported missing, and nothing has happened yet. There was a huge search, but whole backyard, the entire backyard over at the house that they're living in in Cal City has been excavated. So, as far as the house in Bakersfield, I'm not real sure about, but. Kennel City, I do know they excavated the backyard. They didn't find anything. They did two search warrants and took basically only digital um, media. 
So that's what we got right now. And we got two billboards up. The money was raised by the Bio Moms family. Um, their GoFundMe is still up, you guys. They want to put up that third. Um, they want to do that third uh, billboard. They want it. They want to put that up so that everyone can know to be looking for the boys. And I think it's really, really important. So whether you donate five dollars, ten dollars, everything counts. Like they already raised one hundred twenty-two thousand and put up the two first billboards. So I'm pretty sure with everyone's help we can get the rest of the money for them. So just go to GoFundMe, look for their, um, type in Orin and Orson West, maybe. I'm not sure what it's under, but um, go to that. And thank you, Asia. I appreciate your share. Love you, baby. Um, go to their GoFundMe, look them up, and definitely, um, um, I'm not sure what the family member's name is that has made the GoFundMe account for them, but it's part of the Dean family. It's part of the Biowans family. And um, again, the LA field office, um, the FBI LA field office is 310-477-6565. The Cal City PD is 760-373-8606. And then the Bakersfield Police Department is going to be 661-327-7111. Write those numbers down, keep them handy, just in case you happen to encounter these kids. Like I said, it's rare the the chances of a kid making it out there after 72 hours is really slim to nothing but these kids been gone for almost two months so keep this case in mind and keep these boys in mind because they deserve justice and like I said watch the video watch those interviews and let me know what you think about the uh, the list because they're super duper sketchy if you ask me. Their their lack of emotion and the bouncing up back and forth and the way that Trizel, rather than talking about the boys and telling their characteristics, he says what he was doing. He's he's describing himself and what he was doing rather than telling. I mean, that interview tells so much if you just watch because. Coming from a parent, if my kid was missing, there's no way I would be talking about the fact that I was collecting firewood and I can't believe I forgot to leave, I forgot to shut the gate. I would be talking about what the kids had on, what, you know, um, I would be talking about the fact that one of them had a broken left leg. I would, you know, I would, I would be talking about things about the kids and ways you know, to get their attention and where I thought they might go to, just things like that. Not, I definitely wouldn't be talking about what I've been up to and what I was doing at the time. I think he was trying to make an alibi for himself. Let me know what you think, and um, I'll get at you guys later. I love you very much. Have a good one. Bye. Bye, bro.